Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. Starting from today, you and I will work together to get ourselves ready for the math portion of the SAT. The book that you can you need, the book that you're going to need is the one that I'm holding in my hand, the official SAT study guide. The official SAT study guide 2020. Make sure you buy the right edition. Make sure the book is always in front of you. Let's turn to the story. We'll begin with the very first test, which is test number 10. They have it numbered uh, in a reverse order 10, 9, 8, and so forth. Exam number 10 on page number 333 is where you will find the very first set of questions. Let's take a look at them. The first one says 2z plus 1 is equal to z. As you can see in the beginning they are very easy. To subtract z from both sides you will end up with a z equals to negative 1. There is nothing to it. There is nothing to it. There is nothing to explain. And the second one what is going on is that we are going to buy a TV for $300. We are going to buy a TV for $300 but we are not going to pay $300 up front. We are going to pay a down payment of $60. We are going to pay a down payment of $60 it says and then after that Every, every week will go there and make a payment of thirty dollars each each week. That means that at the end of first week, at the end of first week, the amount that we will have paid at the end of first week is our down payment of sixty dollars plus the thirty dollars that we paid in week number one. At the end of at the end of second week, the total amount that we will have paid would be this amount. As you can see, it does not equal to the quantity. Until and, and we'll keep making payment until we reach the magic number, which is the W. How many, how many weeks we need, which means which we need to solve this for W and will tell us how many weeks we need to make the payment to this, have this thing paid off. And this is the equation. Again, it's very straightforward. Number three. In number three, we are shipping a package. And the figures that they give us, figures that they give us in the actual problem, they're very annoying. I'm going to first put them there and I'm going to tell you what to do with them. So here's our shipping cost. Here's the pound and here's the dollar amount of the cost. 5, 10, 20 and 40 pounds. We are told that if we try to ship a package which is only 5 pounds, it costs us $16.94. A 10 pound package will cost us $21.89. 20 pounds will be $31.79 and $51.59. As you can see, if we try to work through these numbers the way they are, they are very, very annoying. The thing to do here is to take some liberties and round them. This is $17, this is $22, and there is $32, and this is $50. And next we ask ourselves if there is any pattern that we can see, which we can clearly see here. As we can see, as, as the weight goes down, goes up from 5 to 10 pounds, the price goes up by $5. As the, as the weight goes up by 10 pounds from 10 to 20, the price goes up by $10. As the weight goes up by 20, uh, 20 pounds, from 20, 20 pounds to 40 pounds, the price goes up by 20 pounds. So what we notice is that for every one pound that the weight goes up, we have to pay a dollar extra. The question is, where does the story actually start? The story does not start here. The story starts from here, which is going to be the intercept. As you can see, for the five pounds, they want $17. It's seven, the entire $17 is not for the, for the whole five pounds. What is going on is that we have to first, we have to first pay the processing fee of $12. And then after twelve dollars, if you have, if you want to if you want to send five pound package, you will pay seventeen dollars. That's what there is. And they want they want us to write the equation. So the function that we're looking for, the function that we're looking for, will have an intercept of twelve, which is what you have to pay regardless of what the weight is, even if it's very little, you have to pay twelve dollars. And then after that, it goes up by one dollar each time for the weight. One times W. And I think they are not using the letter W to represent weight, they are using letter X. That's what it is. It doesn't matter. So it's 12 plus X. 1X. And in the book you will see that it's sort of, it's sort of one whole dollar, they have 99 cents. But it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything. The key, the key here is to keep it simple. The work that is. Number 4. In number 4, we are told that a height of a certain thing 
and they go on to make it very elaborate. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. Number four represents the relationship between the height. The relationship between height and the diameter is what it is. It's the relationship between the height and the diameter. And if you look at the, if you study the graph carefully, if you study the graph graph carefully, you will soon notice that it has a slope of seven. For every one, for every one inch increase or one foot increase in diameter, whatever it is, for every one foot increase in diameter, the height goes up by exactly seven feet. Height goes up by exactly seven feet. And the question that they're asking is, what is the difference between the height when its diameter is five feet versus the height when the diameter is only? Are two feet. We want the difference between h of five and h of two. Well, for every for for every one for every one foot in in diameter, the height goes up by seven feet. So this is just going to be seven times five minus at two feet, the height is going to be two times seven because it starts at zero. There you go. Five times seven minus two times seven will simply be three times seven. The answer is twenty-one. The answer is twenty-one. Number five, in number five they're simply asking us what's, how much is this thing equal to? Square root of nine is three and square root of x squared is three x. In number six, let's do number six separately. In number six, we have x squared minus one over x minus one, we are told is equal to two. And here, we have two options here. We have two ways that we can go about it. One is the algebraic way, and one is to simply try out the answer choices that they give us. Which one should we try first? Let's do the algebraic way first, if you like, only because it's a very important concept, and if you know it, it does save you a lot of time. This is what is given to us: x squared minus one. But in reality, what we are given here is not x squared minus one. What we are given here is x squared minus one squared, which is one, and that thing should equal x plus 1 times x minus 1. It is called the difference of two squares. Difference of two squares. And it goes something like this. a plus b times a minus b equals a squared minus b squared. If you do it out, a squared then plus ab and then, and then minus ab will plus a b and minus a b will drop out and then finally plus b and minus b let's do it out a squared minus a b plus a b minus b squared there you see it drops out so a squared minus b squared is simply the product of this of these two quantity a plus b a minus b and the final result is a squared minus b squared this this quantity is a squared quantity this quantity is squared quantity hence the difference of two squares and that's what that is and if we, if we knew all of this thing, we could have saved ourselves a lot of time by simply realizing the top is simply x plus 1 times x minus 1. And the bottom is x minus 1, you see? And it drops out, x minus 1 drops out. And what we're left with is x plus 1 is equal to negative 2, which means x is equal to negative 3. All done. Now, if we, if we did not know this thing, then in that case, all we can do is try out the answer choices. Let's try out the answers. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the very first answer choice that they give us, answer choice A, happens to be negative three. Happens, happens to be happens to be the right answer. So if you put in negative three in here, we'll end up with negative three squared minus one over negative three minus one. Negative three squared is just positive nine. Positive nine minus one is eight. And then negative three and negative one is going to give us negative four. Eight over negative four is gives us negative two, which is exactly what we're told and it agrees. Therefore, A is the right answer. Of course, it's the right answer. We just did it, and we found it to be the right answer. And by the same token, if you try out all the others, you will see they will not work. The second answer choice is zero. Zero would not work. Because if x is equal to zero, x squared would drop out because it's just zero. This will drop out and will end up with negative one over negative one. Negative one over negative one is just one. Negative one over negative one is one, and it does not equal negative over 1 over negative 1 does not equal negative 2. It equals positive 1. 
And similarly, C will not work. C says X is equal, X is equal to 1. I'm explaining too much. You will see that none of them work. Answer choice D, in answer choice D, they have two quantities. They have negative 3 and negative 1. And I can show you very quickly that negative 1 will not work. Negative 1 will not work. Let's find out. Negative 1 actually is very simple. Negative 1 squared minus 1, and we can stop right here. We can stop right here. We don't have to go any further. As you can see, negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 divided by anything is 0. It will not equal negative 2. Never in a million years. So the answer was indeed A. But like I said, knowing a little bit of algebra could save us a, little, a lot of time. This question simply asks us what's the value of the function when x is equal to 0. What is the value of the function when, a, when, when x is equal to 0? And this is read as, this is read as f of 0. Which is simply means what's the value of this function when x is 0. That's all it is. So, here is the function that is given to us. It looks, it looks something like this. And where is x equal to 0? Where is x equal to 0? x is equal to 0 right here, along y-axis. So essentially what they're asking is the y-intercept. What is, how much is the y-intercept? x is equal to 0. What's the value of the function at that point? And the answer is, it is 4. The y-intercept is 4. That's all they're looking for. Even though the graph looks very elaborate, but it's just there to intimidate us, there is nothing to it. They're simply looking for y-intercept. Just look at the graph and see where it cuts the y-axis. Number 8. Number 8 says that uh, we have a graph here, something like this. This is 2x, this is 2x, and this is x. And we are told that this angle is 90 degrees. We are told this outside angle is 90 degrees, but because it sits on a straight line, even though they don't tell us that, but because it sits on a straight line, if this is 90 degrees, this must also be 90 degrees. And all you have to do is figure out the sum of uh, figure out what the x is. x plus 2x plus 2x is 5x, so 5x equals 90, which implies that x must equal 90 over 5. Let's multiply top and bottom by 2 here very quickly. And we'll end up with 90 over 2 times 10. Why did we multiply top and bottom over 2? Because I don't want to divide 90 by 5, do you? No, it's much easier just to go, just to cross out the zeros dividing by 10. So that's it. 8, 9 times 2 is 18. X is equal to 18, but don't stop here. Okay. Don't stop, don't make that mistake, because I bet you 18 is one of the answer choices. And it is, it's answer choice A. They're not looking for how much is X, they're asking us how much is 3X. How much is 3X? It's just 3 times that. 8, 3 is a 24, carry 2, 3 and 2, 54. There you go. That is your 3X. 3X is 54. And that's all there is. Number 9. Number 9. In number 9, we have a we have a little graph here that goes through something like this, looks something like this. It cuts through negative 4, 0 and positive 4. What the hell? That can be positive 4. Because the x is 0 over there. 0 and negative 1 and negative 4. Sometimes one wonders. Where is my pointer? There you go. x is 0 and y is negative 4 over there. Those are the coordinates to that point and this co the coordinates of this point are negative 4 and 0. This is what is given to us. And then we have four equations there and our job is to identify the correct equation that goes with this graph. The very first one is x minus y equals negative 4. Again, there are two ways of going about it, the algebraic way and just simply plugging in the number answer choices. Algebraic way is going to be very elaborate, let's not do that. In, uh, in the algebraic way, what you're going to do is you're going to convert every single equation in, in slope intercept form like mx plus b. You're going to have to convert everything in this form and then realize that the correct equation will have a negative slope and intercept or whatever intercept you're looking for here, y intercept of negative 4. So b has to be negative 4 in this, form, in this form, but first we have to convert this into this form for every one of them and then find 
that's one way. We're not going to do that way. Another way is to simply plug in the coordinates. So what's going to happen is that the line has to go through whatever whatever the correct equation is must go through both of these points, which means the coordinates of both of these points must satisfy the equation. So we're going to have to go two rounds. In the first round, we'll knock out one or two answer choices. Obviously, not three of them because then we'll know the right answer. We'll knock out probably one or two answer choices. We'll go second round and we'll narrow down even more. Let's, let's go. Negative four and zero. Negative four and zero. There you go. That one works. A is a potential candidate. A is a potential candidate because it works. A is, we're not saying A is the right answer. It's a potential candidate. Next one says X minus Y equals four. Well, there you go. We don't have to waste our time doing it out. If, if by using the coordinates of this point, let's, let's give it name A and B. Instead of, instead of calling them this point and that point, let's just call them A and B. If by using the coordinate of points A, if by using the coordinates of point A in this one, we found that the difference between the two is negative four, we don't have to waste our time again. All of a sudden, the difference is not going to be positive four. It's the same bloody quantity, x minus y. It's not going to work. C says, C says x plus y is equal to negative four. Let's see, x plus y, negative 4 plus a 0 equals negative 4. That works. C is a potential, potential candidate. And D says x plus y is equal to positive 4. Again, same exact logic. If before x plus y was negative 4, all of a sudden it's not going to become positive 4 if you're using the same coordinates. D is not the right answer. Now we go one more round. That's what it is. It takes, it takes much, much, it takes far less time when you're just doing it on your own without having to babble all the time. So let's go second round. Now we're going to use this one. 0 minus negative 4. But there you go. 0 minus negative 4 does not equal negative 4. The answer is C. That was number 9. Number 10. That was number nine. Number ten. In number ten, it says that we have a uh, equation here. Y is equal to two x squared plus ten x plus twelve. And the question is, in this graph that they give us, if I'm reading it correctly. Yes, that's the equation that is given to us, and in the graph that they give us, it looks something like this. It cuts the it cuts the y-axis at k. And the question is, how much is k? Well, again, just like before, the point where the graph cuts the y-axis, that's the y-intercept. At that, along that line, along this y-axis, along this y-axis, any anywhere on the y-axis, x is equal to zero. Let's put in x is equal to 0 and find out what k is, which is right there. If x is equal to 0, y of 0 is simply going to be 0 plus 0 plus 12. Well, I don't know why I'm doing it. This thing is 12. k is equal to 12. The y-intercept is 12. There is nothing to it at all. Number 11. Number 11 says that we have a circle with center 5, 7 and radius 2 and our job our job is to identify the right equation for the for the circle that goes uh, that has a radius of 2 and that has a center of 5, 7 again there are two ways of doing it one is the classical way the orthodox way the academic way which requires that you know what an equation of a circle looks like and if you happen to be one of those people, great, you'll be done like that. If not, then we'll do a little bit more work. So for those of you who know this equation, it looks something like this. x minus x1 squared plus y minus y1 squared equals r squared. So in this case, our x1 is the coordinate of x is 5 squared, coordinate of y is 7 squared, and then r squared, which is 2, so it's going to be 2 squared. This is the correct answer. Now, for those of you who did not know the equation of circle, or do not, know, or might, 
or you might think that you might not remember during the exam because it's very easy to mess it up. You might forget whether it's plus here and whether it's x minus, whether it's x minus x1 or is it x plus x1 or whether it's r squared or whether it's r. Well, here's another way. So this time we're going to pretend. This time we're going to pretend that we do not know the equation, and we can still find out what the right answer is. Here's what we are told. We are told that we have a circle that goes through 5, 7. So let's draw a circle. Give it a center of 5, 7. Are you with me? Now, simply cut it in half. Just draw up a 90 degree. There we go. Are you still with me? Now because the radius is 2, because the radius is 2, which means the distance from here to here is 2. The x coordinate of this point, of course, is going to be the same as this one, 5. And the y coordinate is going to be 9. There you go. The circle must go through this point. Just substitute the coordinate of this point in all four of the equation and see which one works. There's another one that goes through. This one is 5, so x coordinate is going to be 5. And then since the radius is 2, since we're going down, instead of 7, it's going to be 5. Oh, there you go. I'm going to use this one because it's less work. 5, 5 is much easier. Let's go through all of them very quickly. A says x minus 5 squared plus y minus 7 squared equals 4. Let's see if it works. x minus 5. Well, 5. x coordinate of, uh, of this point is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. We don't have to worry about it. And here we'll have... 5 minus 2 minus 7, which is going to give us negative 2 squared equals 4. There you go, we found the answer. It works. Negative 2 squared equals positive 4. Let me quickly show you. Let me just quickly show you that all the others will not work. B says x plus 5 squared plus y plus 7 squared equals 4. Now, as I was writing it, I don't know if you noticed it, but there was a slight hesitation in my hand. As soon as I wrote that thing, I was going to stop. There is no, there is no reason even to your eyes to even go that far, because you, you're going to add another quantity to it, uh, another quantity which is being squared. Listen carefully. This quantity is being squared. So even without looking at it, just so you know that it's being squared, it's a positive quantity. And if you're going to add a positive quantity to this quantity, it's going to get even bigger. But we are already at 25, or rather 10. X coordinate of X is 5. 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 is squared. Last time I checked, did not equal 4. The answer is not B. Not even close. And the rest, x minus 5 is squared plus y minus 7 squared, which is same as A, which is exact same as A, but all of a sudden now they say it's 2. It's not 2, we just found it's 4. It has to be R squared. Similarly, D is not going to work. Because D, has, D again has the same situation as B. It starts out with x plus 5. x plus 5 is 10. 10 squared is 100. It doesn't matter whether you have 2, two over here or 4 over here. 100 is not going to equal either 2 or a 4. The answer is B. Answer is B. That was number 11. Let's do the next one on, the, on that page. With number 12. In number 12, We are given two triangles, one small one, right angle triangle, 5, 12, 13, and the other big one, D, E, and F. And we are told that these two, angles, these two triangles are similar. These are similar triangles. What does it mean for angles? What does it mean for triangles to be similar? When the triangles are similar, what that means is that all the three sides are in strict proportion. So this side is, if, if this side is 5, oh, I wrote it the other way around. Oh man, I, I messed it up. This is not how the picture is. It's not going to give us the right answer. It's important that I write the way they appear. The 5 is the bottom, 12 is this. So it's a good thing I noticed it. Otherwise, you were about to pick the wrong answer. This is how the picture appears. So. What does it mean for triangles to be similar? It simply means that the sides are proportional. For example, if you tell me that this triangle is 5, 12, 13, and then all of a sudden if you tell me that this side is 20, and because you told me that they are similar, if this side is 20, then this will have to be 12 times 4, because this is 5 times 4, and this will have to be 13 times 4. That's all it is. That's all it is. In other words, 
what we are trying to say here is that what we are trying to say is that ratio of any two sides here is the exact same ratio as any two sides as long as you take the two two, two corresponding sides. There we go. And the question here is, what's, what is what is the cosine of E? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And adjacent over hypotenuse, even though nothing is given to us here, but because the sides are in the same proportion as this triangle, we can use this triangle as a proxy. So there we go, adjacent it adjacent to this this angle because we are looking for cosine of E, cosine of E would be 12 over hypotenuse which is this guy right here 13. In reality what it is is that the size of this this triangles in reality we don't know but whatever it is is uh, is is some multiple of k and this one is also some multiple of k. So it doesn't matter whether this is 12 times 5 or whether it is 12 times 3 this because they are same multiple they drop out and the cosine is 12 over 13. Cosine is 12 over 13. We're going to stop right here. We'll meet again tomorrow and we'll pick up from where we left off from question number question number 13 on the next page at page number 337. Okay. If you wish to get hold of me, if you if you would like to work with me, if you would like to have me as your tutor to get you ready for the exam, if you would like to hire me, you can reach me at Ishwani Prep, that's P-R-E-P, at iCloud.com. Alright? Bye now.